Hey guys, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another painting tutorial and today we're painting this lady. Now I'm going to presume that it's called the Cenari Cathalar or Catholar. The Cenari Cathalar. Anyway, whatever her name is, <laughs> however you pronounce that. I think I'm pretty certain I've got the first word right, the Cenari Cathalar. Let's just go with Cathalar. We're going to be painting her today. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to do this because there's a lot of there's a lot of cool different things that we can do with this, and there's a really nice challenge with that uh, with that face veil that we've got there. So the first color that we're going to start with actually is we're going to start on the big main robes, and the color we're going to be using for this first is ultramarines blue. So what we do is we take our ultramarines blue on our brush, and what we don't want to do is we want to make contact with the model up here by the by the recess, and we just want to start pulling this down in these big broad brush strokes. We don't want to like just slap it on willy-nilly because we want a nice smooth finish with this ultramarines blue all over her robes. So you just want to keep going like this uh, technique that I'm doing here. Like I would say these big broad brush strokes. It doesn't matter so much when you're in amongst all of this detail because there's loads of recesses for the for the contrast to run into but when we're talking about these big flat wide open areas we want to do these big broad brush strokes like that because we don't want this to be too smeary we are going to go over it in different colors but we just want a nice established base coat first so we want to keep going around like this and then we'll come back and next up, once that ultramarine's blue is dry, we're going to use a small amount of some thinned down techless blue. And we're going to use this to apply a highlight to all of the raised edges in all of that cloth, like this. Now don't worry if the techless blue feels a little too stark or a little bit too warm over that ultramarine's blue. So we are going to blend it all together like this and I'm using quite a quite a thick highlight here like this and next up with that techless blue all applied what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down hoeth blue and we're going to do much the same thing again but we want to do a much narrower highlight along each of these areas Like this. Just going over the top of the middle of those techless blue areas. And with that Hoeth blue applied, the last highlight we're going to do to these robes, well, before we do any of this uh, ornate edging, is we're going to use some Fenrisian grey, not very much, and we just want to run this across the sharpest points of these highlights in the robes. So areas like this. So just, we're not covering the entire of the highlight. We're just doing little pieces of it. Like that, where the, ro where the light would catch. It's basically at the top of any of the long ones and where any of the kind of folds and creases meet in like a triangle and of course around this knee you can see poking through her dress and with that 
what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the trim of those robes before we pull all of that blue robe together. It's already looking pretty great, but we want to add a little bit more depth. So before we do that, however, to make life easier for ourselves, we're going to create a roughly two parts Lothurn blue to one part Corax white mix to give us this really lovely kind of baby blue, sky blue uh, kind of colour. And we're going to use this to paint in all of the trim on all of the robes. So we want to do this along here along the arms, that's it, <laughs> along the hem of the robe and along the arms. And we just want this all over. Like this. And with that Lothurn blue and Corax white mix applied, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Leviathan blue glaze. And we're going to use this over all of those robes. And we're doing this to blend together all of the highlights that we've applied. But we're also using this to apply some subtle shading to that lother and blue mix that we've just that we've just applied. And so this way we do it all at the same time. We don't give ourselves a headache trying to kind of add a shade or whatever to those, to that trim. And with that Leviathan blue glaze applied over the top, you can see we've blended all of those colours together and those robes look amazing. So now what we're going to do, just to finish them off a little bit more, is we're going to use a small amount of blue horror and we're going to use this to highlight that trim again, just to brighten it back up. Like this. I don't want to use any of the blue horror in the like, the super darkest recesses. We just want to be picking out the brightest areas of the trim. So you can see I, I miss that little bit in there. Um, so just want to keep going around with the blue horror, effectively highlighting that trim. And with that blue horror applied to that trim, we have now finished all of the dark blue robes and I think they look fantastic. So what we're gonna do now, just to finish off this kind of section, is we're gonna use some skeleton hoard. I'm gonna use this for the underside of her robe. And we don't wanna use loads at a time. We effectively just kind of wanna get a nice soft cream color. Like this, you can see I'm just pulling off any excess with my brush because I just want effectively to stain this section with this kind of soft creamy bone colour. And with that skeleton hoard applied, all we're now going to do is we're going to use some Corax white. And we're going to use this to basically colour in all of the areas that we want to be white in terms of like her armour. Little there is. So we want to do the underside of the brassiere that she's holding. We also want to do her headpiece. And we also want to do this central part of, I guess it's a corset, her tummy, her tummy armour. And with that Corax white applied, what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly two part storm host silver to one part retributor armour mix. And this is to give us a really lovely white gold. And we're going to use this across all of the trim on all of those bits that we've just painted with the Corax white. So areas like the, whole, the, the, the headdress and the trim on the brassiere thing that she's carrying, as well as these large sweeping arms around her waist, all of this stuff. So you just wanna go around picking all of this out and then we'll come back. 
And with that Retributor Armor and Stormhost Silver mix applied, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some neat Retributor Armor. And this is going to be used for all of the bits that we've basically not painted with that white gold. So what we want to do is we want to pick out areas like these pegs here holding these tassels in place. And we also want to get the bit underneath as well. Like that. We also want to do the laurel around her head. And we want to pick out the sigil here on the waist. And we want to pick out the sigil here in the middle of her headgear. Like that. We also want to do the hanging parts of the gems, like little hooks and connectors and things. And we also want to do, there's a lot of got these warmer gold details. We want to pick out this little clasp in her hair down here. And last but not least, we want to use the stretch butter on her to paint in Effectively, what are these magical hot coals? And with that Retributor armor applied, we're nearly ready to do some shades. But before we do that, we are actually just going to coat in a few more of the base coats. And the color that we're going to use next is Achillean Green. And we're going to be using this for all of these tassels that are hanging off her. Down here. You want to make sure that you get both sides, of course, as well as the underneath part as well. Because there's nothing worse than when you're painting a tassel and you come to highlight it and the bottom isn't done. It's so annoying. What we also want to use this Achillean Green for I'm just going to wash my brush so I get a bit more precision. So we want to use it for the small rings that attach these hanging gems to the headdress. Like that. It's just for those bits there. And next up with that Achillean green applied, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some black Templar and we're going to use this on all of her hair. And with that done, we're going to use some Wildwood, and this is going to be for the strap on her back. I've got a slightly too big brush there. We're just going to use this on the strap on her back, as I said. So just this bit in here. We just want to get this all over. Just being really careful around all that lovely blue that we've now done. And with that belt at her back done, we're now going to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to use this to shade all of that white gold that we've done. We want this to be nice and thin because we want lots of control over this. We also don't want to overwhelm it. So what we want to do is we want to get this shade all over these bits. Like this. This is the, the easy bit, because what we also want to do, so we don't want loads on there, we just want to apply a bit of shading, like that. And what you do is we also take a small amount and basically want to recess shade this whenever we get close to some white armour. We just want this wildwood mix to kind of overlap the metal 
and apply a little bit of shadow into that over that corax white as well and with that done we're now going to do a very similar thing only this time we're going to make a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part griffhound orange mix and we're going to use this on all of that warm gold so on all of that retributor armor that we've just done on its own so around the laurel wreath on her on her fore on her crown ugh, on her head around the little sigil up here and the sigil on her waist as well as these little gizmos down here and the co the, the coals inside there so just want to go around getting this griffhound orange on all of this stuff and then we'll come back and with that done, those metallics are now ready for some highlights. But before we do that, we are just going to colour in the rest of the base coats. And then we're going to kind of highlight back down the, back down the, I guess, down the list, as it were. So what we want to do is we want to use some Volupus Pink first. And this is going to be for the handle on the brassiere, the soft grip. So you can see it, there's a lip on it just here where it finishes. So we want to use this Volupus Pink here like this just being really careful when we get close to the base because we want that still to be white and next up once that's done we're going to paint in the skin and the color that we're going to use is Gilliman flesh what we want to do is we want to use this all over her hands her feet and of course her face so you just want to get Good coverage of this all over the hands and feet because we want this to be quite a strong colour. Like this, just being really careful when we get close to any of that detail we've already painted in. Same down here on the feet because we don't want a Gilliman fleshy stain on that lovely robe. Also make sure to get the back of the feet as well. And you just want to go up here and get the leg too. Like so. like that. I'm going to do that hand in a minute. We also want to do the face. Now, the face is slightly trickier because what we want to try and do is avoid the folds in the veil. So we just want to take our time here. Just avoiding where possible the areas that that veil has got the kind of the folds like I'm doing here that doesn't matter too much because you can just neaten it back up with some wraith bone but it's always nice to not have to dig out the wraith bone at every opportunity like that just so want to make sure that we get the ear just there. And once that Gilliman flesh is dry, what we want to do is we want to create a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part apothecary white mix. And we're going to use this to now basically desaturate her face and start coloring in this veil. So what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of this on our brush. And we basically just want to be very careful here we don't want to completely overload those facial features. And this is basically our first coat of paint that we're going to use mostly just to grey out her eye, her, her skin. 
like this. Just making sure it doesn't build up too much. And then of course, we want to use the same mix to just color in the rest of the veil. Like that. And next up, with that contrast medium and apothecary white mix applied, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna create the same mix again, but with a Space Wolves Grey instead. So six parts contrast medium to one part Space Wolves Grey. And we're gonna once again, go over the whole of that veil. Now, the reason we didn't do this first is because we want quite a strong Space Wolves Grey color. But if we do two layers of, con of, of Space Wolves Grey, it comes out really, really blue. We don't want that. So we just want to get this all over the veil. Like this. And then over her face as well. Like this. Again, just make sure that you don't like completely drown the recesses on her face with this color. So just mop up when there's too much. So like you can see there, there's too much currently. So you just wanna use the brush to pull it off like that. And once that's dry, you should start seeing that that, that face has really started to desaturate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the same mix again, and we're gonna use a small amount of it. And we're going to basically just kind of dab it on to just the face. Like this using this thins down mix. Just to make it really nice and blue. So we're using small amounts and we just want to build it up again. Like this. Like that. But what we also want to do, give the brush a quick wash, is we just want to use some Space Wolves Grey, neat, straight out the pot. We now want to use this in these big broad brush strokes over the top of the rest of the veil that isn't connected to her face. We just want to go up to the face Like that. But don't want to actually get this Space Wolves Grey straight from the pot all over the face. Like that. So now we'll have a nice kind of bluish veil somewhere on the back. Much easier on the back because there's no face to worry about. And with that done, we now want to brighten that veil back up. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Fenrisian grey. And we're going to highlight all of those hard edges on the veil. And so we want to start with the ones going across her face. To get those out of the way. Like this.
and then we also want to go across and do all of the edges across the veil itself with the Fenrisi in grey. And next up, we want to use a small amount of blue horror to apply a little bit of a spot highlight to the sharpest points along these areas of the veil. Like this, just be very careful. With the blue horror, like that. And with that, the veil and the face are now finished. So what we wanna do is we're gonna do this smoke bit next. We're gonna use two colors for this. We're gonna be using Griff Charger Gray and shage purple. And we're going to use them at the same time. We're going to use a slightly bigger brush than that one. And what we want to do is we want to basically get this Griff Charger Grey, load up our brush with it, and then just on these smoke trails, start blocking in that colour like this. We want to get this Griff Charger Grey all over these smoke trails. be a bit messy here doesn't matter too much just want to take care that we don't get this all over that gold like this nearly there it doesn't matter if some of this if charge grey goes on those orange coal coals, but what we don't want it is we don't really want it on the uh, the white gold. Although I suppose it's not really white gold at the moment. On the bit that we originally did with that retributor armor and storm host mix, and then shaded with some wildwood. So we're just getting this all over like this. There we are. And what we do is we wash our brush off. And then we grab some shayish purple. And now we just start once again, whilst it's still wet, just coating over where we've added that Griff Charger Grey. Like this. So the two colours mixed together on the model. As you can see, I've only used one brush load of shage purple. And it's already enough to do a layer all over. of how dark and rich the colour is. Make sure we get right in there. Like that. And again, doesn't matter too much if you get some of this shayish purple on some of those orange hot coals. We don't want it on the gold. And once that Griff Charger Grey and Shayish Purple is dry, what we now want to do is we want to use some Slanesh Grey. And we want to use this to highlight all of these areas, just leaving that Shayish Purple and Griff Charger Grey nestling in the recesses. 
We want this to be a nice big highlight. With that sludge grey applied, what we want to do is we want to take some Corax white, not very much. And we want to apply a little bit of a spot highlight in areas around the smoke. Don't worry if it's too stark. We are going to darken it down in a moment. This is just so that we've got a bit of variation from when we do the final glaze. And then lastly, just to finish this section off, what we want to do is we want to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Leviathan blue glaze. And what we want to do is we just want to slowly and very carefully paint this all over the top of all those highlights and all that purple that we've already established like this. And with that done, the smoke is now finished. So what we're going to do is going to colour in our last base coat. And the colour that we're going to use is Magos Purple. And we don't want to use loads of this, that's too much. And we just want to use this on these gems here. Or rather these hanging droplet gems. And with that Magos Purple applied, we've got all of our base coats established on the model. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply some highlights. And the first thing we're going to do is highlight all of the gold. And this includes the warm gold and the cold gold. Or the rose gold, or white gold, whatever I've been calling it. White gold. White gold and the warm gold. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use the colour again, where we make a mix of one part Retributor Armour to two parts Storm Host Silver. I'm going to grab a small amount of this on our brush, and we're just going to start highlighting once again all of those areas that are gold. And with that Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armour mix applied, what we want to do is we just want to use a little bit of Stormhost Silver just on its own. And we're going to use this as a little bit of a spot highlight on the sharpest areas of these gold details. So we want to kind of across the top here, just do a little bit like that and a little bit around there. And we want to do some around here on the, on the drum of the brassier, a bit of here on the tip. Just add a little bit of it to the tips of the laurel like this. You just want to go around picking out like just little areas that you want the the light to catch off of, basically. And with that Stormhost Silver applied, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of Blue Horror. We want to use this to highlight all that Achillean green that we've got going on around the model. So we got it on these little connectors up here and also on all the tassels. And with that Achillean green applied, we want to take a small amount of Flayed One Flesh. And we want to use this to highlight all of the skin that isn't under the veil. So basically we just want to pick out the knuckles of her hands. And down here as well. And also kind of joints in the toes. And with that flayed one flesh applied, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of administratum grey. And we want to use this to just pick out some of the strands of the hair in the plait. And as well as across the top of her head. We don't want to do all of them because we want a bit of variation in there. And, you know, the, the Black Templar has done quite a lot of the work for us here. Just using this to add a little bit of variation. And with that administratum grey applied to the hair, all that's left to do now is to paint in the gems. And so the colour that we're going to make is a roughly two parts fulgrim pink to one part corax white. I'm going to thin that down all together with a little bit of water. We take some on our brush and what we want to do is basically want to paint the majority of the gem 
in like a semicircle, just leaving the darkest part towards the top. So you get this kind of fade from the Magos purple to this lovely pale pink colour. And with that applied, just to finish them off, we want to use a little bit of Corax white on its own. And we'll basically draw a little semicircle around the bottom of each of the gems, like that. And with that, the Cenari Cathalar is now finished. All that's left to do is the base. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to grab some wildwood and we're going to use this to paint in all of this soil here around at the base of that ruined column. And the reason we're doing it with wildwood is because wildwood is the closest match to Stirland Battlemire, which is what we're going to fill in the rest of the base with. We just want to do this on all of the soil. And then we'll come back. And once that wildwood is dry, what we want to do is we want to grab our three colours for this uh, for this rock that she's standing on. And the three colours are going to be Griff Charger Grey, Space Wolf Grey, and Skeleton Horde. Now what we do is we start with Griff Charger Grey. We want to get this all over the rocks. So we just want to start painting it all over like this in these nice, big, broad brush strokes. And Griff Charger Grey is a lovely paint. It just always kind of, well, I think it just goes on so smoothly a lot of the time, it's great. So what we do is we keep doing this all over the rocks like that with the Griff Charger Grey, like this. Until we get about halfway. being careful around those feet like that then we wash the brush off grab some space walls gray and we just apply this all over some of the other areas to add a little bit of variation that we've added that griff charger gray over now every time you go back to get more space walls gray make sure you wash your brush so you don't contaminate your pots Like this. And I'm going to continue it on. Grab some Space Wolves Grey. I'm going to do this all over the part that doesn't have any Griff Charger Grey on it. Being very careful now that we're getting near those feet. Like that. And then what we want to do, wash the brush one more time, grab a small amount of skeleton hoard, not very much, kind of that amount. I just want to start applying this in areas all across. And you don't have to be, a, like, it doesn't have to be like a completely consistent coat. You just you almost want it to be quite patchy. So like a stippling effect is really effective here. So wash the brush. Small amount. Not very much. It's a little bit too much. And just kind of stuff or stipple some of this on around here, and around here. And with those three colours applied to the rocks, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, we're going to grab a little bit of Militarum Green. We want to use this on this little grass shoot here. Like this. And with that done, what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in all that blank space on the base with some Stirland Battlemire. And with all that Stirland Battlemire applied, what we now want to do is we want to give the whole brush, uh, base a dry brush 
of Tyrant Skull. We want to use this all over that Sterling Battlemire, that wildwood soil that we painted in. And we want to use it just to catch the edges of the rocks. And we also want to use it across the tops of these grasses here like that. We don't want to do it all over. We want it kind of to be a little bit of a fade between the green and the Tyrant Skull like that. Just to make it look really a lot like wheat. Just wanna, as I say, we're just catching the edges of those of that ruin. We wanna get a nice consistent dry brush of this all over all of that soil. Get rid of that ha cat hair. I've added some tufts to that base just to give it a little bit more life. And now all that's left to do is the rim of the base and the color I'm gonna be using is some thin down Steel Legion Drab. And with the base finished, you just have to sit back and look at the model. I mean, come on. This Lumineth Realm Lords is really breaking some new ground. The Light of Eltharion is completely hollow as a piece of armor. This lady's wearing a veil over her face. Teclis is enormous. There's just so much going on here. I, I adore all of it. I really hope you enjoyed this one and really enjoyed that challenge of doing that veil. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or go to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.